There are several well-known factories in Russia that manufacture airplanes suitable for carrying passengers. These companies are evidently subsidized by the government. It's all the opposite for Rusavia Prom factory in Novosibirsk, where the TVS 2MS airplane is manufactured. Rusavia Prom relies exclusively on private investments and sees its mission in development of small regional air routes. The Rus Avia Prom factory is considered on par with the giants of the aviation industry but works in its own narrow niche. They build light, practical and reliable aircraft for operation in remote regions when you can't get by a regular jet plane or just can't get to otherwise at all. Rus Avia Prom was founded in 2011 for mass production of the remotorized version of Antonov An-2 that was named TVS-2MS. This new version was developed by Siberian Aviation Research Institute and Rusaviaprom was designated as a manufacturing facility. Private stakeholders invested an equivalent of about 20 million US dollars into this enterprise. Until 2014, it was an experimental production, so that several airplanes would work as a proof of concept. In 2015, Russian Ministries of Industry and Trade and of Transportation approved TVS-2MS as an airworthy commercial passenger transport. Since 2016, passenger flights are performed by Narian Mar Air Squadron. In 2018, scheduled flights were launched by Aero Service Airline. In 2019, by Kalima Aviation. In 2020, by Siberian Light Aviation. Soon, the state-owned Amur Air Base will join these ranks. In seven years, TVS-2MS carried more than 65,000 fair-paying passengers in remote areas of Siberia, Russian North and Russian Far East. That includes routes that were not served since the dissolution of the USSR. In total, we produced about 30 airplanes so far. They are used by both state-owned and private companies carrying passengers and doing other jobs alike. In addition to carrying passengers, TVS-2MS is used in wildfire suppression, aerial photography and surveillance, laser scanning, and for lifting sports paratroopers to altitudes of up to 4 kilometers. TVS-2MS is fitted with the Cades proven Honeywell TPE331-12 single-shaft turboprop engine rated at 1100 horsepower and with a 5-blade left-handed reversible Hardzell propeller. The key feature of this Honeywell engine is that it has no designated service life and an extremely long time between overhauls. For instance, the overhaul life of the classic Asha 62 piston engine used in AN-2 is 800 hours while with these Honeywell engines, it is 7,000 hours. This power plant also greatly improves the airplane performance. For instance, a fully loaded TVS-2MS climbs to 12,000 feet in 16 minutes and can cruise at up to 130 knots. The original Antonov biplane usually does not climb above 7,000 feet and cruises at about 100 knots. There are two ways to purchase TVS-2MS. One is to buy a ready-made airplane, another is to modernize an existing AN-2. Conversion of an AN-2 into a TVS-2MS consists of three stages. The first stage is a compulsory overhaul of an airframe, which lasts for about three months. The second stage is parallel to the first one. It includes the assembly of the engine mount, where a Honeywell engine with its air and oil systems is installed. The third stage is about joining all of those together and an exhaustive flight testing of the new airplane. The whole work is done by up to eight certified professionals, two electricians and six assemblers. The process is controlled by the Enterprise Quality Management System at every stage. Apart from hull overhaul, engine replacement and upgrade of flight instruments, Rusavia Prom can also rework and upgrade cabin interiors for any kind of use upon customer request, including air ambulance and executive transport. TVS-2MS is much cheaper than comparable non-Russian planes. This allows local airlines to quickly obtain relatively inexpensive planes that, unlike the AN-2, require regular jet fuel instead of expensive aviation gasoline, have no trouble in hot or freezing weather, and no climb rate issues. Each of these planes can cover operational needs for another 15 to 20 years. It really works and everything is done very quickly. That's important because it is entirely possible to produce an airworthy aircraft in three months and immediately include it into a flight schedule. No one else can do it. 
Legal support of transactions and after-sales service is provided by PMI IRO that acts akin to a car dealership. PMI IRO studies the customer needs, helps to define the playing configuration, and then assists with getting the leasing deal done on terms most favorable for the customer. PMI IRO has an extensive experience in customer relations, and that includes non-Russian clients as well. The company sold TVS2MS to the Republic of Belarus and streamlined its certification in Mongolia and Kazakhstan. Basically, any country can recognize this airplane as they see fit based on the existing airworthiness paperwork. An inexpensive plane with low TCO may be really useful for public service tasks and local airlines in countries like Indonesia or in African countries or elsewhere. This plane has quite favorable sales prospects. In addition to transaction support and after-sales service, PMI Aero is tasked with expanding the dealer network and finding new customers. TVS to MS attracts more and more attention day by day, namely, airlines learn about it from their colleagues. We used to call airlines ourselves, offering the plane. Now we're getting incoming calls. And that leads to more frequent, let's say, meetings and presentations that eventually are concluded into contracts. The TVS 2MS plane has already been operating for several years on scheduled passenger flights in Transbaikalia. Here, TVS 2MS proved itself as inexpensive, efficient and dependable. It carries many passengers to hard-to-reach and sparsely populated villages where air travel is the only sensible way to get out and about. The area of Transbaikalia is 432,000 square kilometers. It is more than Japan or Germany or is like about a half of Nigeria. At that, the region's population is just over one million people. A third of them live in the city of Chita, the regional capital. In total, there are 10 cities, 40 semi-urban settlements and 750 rural settlements. Many of them are hard to reach or very hard to reach. We have settlements where there's only aviation, but no roads, no rivers, you can only fly there. The government of Transbaikalia supports and subsidizes air carriers who agree for such non-commercial flights, so that people could get between their home and the rest of the world. Transbaikalian regional carrier is Aeroservice Airlines. At the time of filming, on spring 2022, it had a fleet of nine planes, two L410, three AN2 and four TVS2MS. Of 10 settlements served by IRA service scheduled flights, only two can accept anything bigger than TVS 2MS or AN 2. Even in Soviet times, only AN 2 flew there. Now it's AN 2 and TVS. The condition of these trips is still satisfactory, but it has not improved. Nobody lengthened or reinforced them. It's obvious that AN2 or TVS 2MS are the only planes in existence that can operate there. Nothing else can land there. Maybe a helicopter can, but that's a different thing. The majority of Transbaikalian population lives in the southern and central parts of the region, while northern areas are sparsely populated. There are hard-to-reach villages that are sensibly accessible only by air. During the flight you must stay seated, crossing this belt line is prohibited, and your seat belts must be fastened for your safety. Not every city 100,000 has an airport. We took a scheduled TVS to MS flight to settlements where the population ranges from less than 1,000 persons to less than 100. One of our service routes looks like this, from Chita to Usugli, Tunga Kochen, Krasny Yar, Yomachen, and back. Less than 5,000 persons altogether live in these four settlements and surrounding hamlets. An unpaved road reaches only as far as Tunga Kochen, but further on there is nothing but thick taiga woods, bogs, rivers, and treacherous creeks. For example, it is 100 kilometers from Tunga Kochen to Yomachen. TVS 2MS covers that in half an hour, maybe a bit more. 
The alternative would be the entire day in a tracked ATV that is based on a 1960s Soviet tank. A machine like that was used here in Soviet times during fall weather. Now that diesel guzzler is long decommissioned, but the plane, to much delight of local dwellers, has returned. Here, 40 minutes and I'm home. In an ATV, it's a long day trip, 10 hours if not more. And where the ride is bumpier? In an all-terrain vehicle, of course. You're going off-road there. Irina Shevarenko lived in Yumurchen, then moved to Tungakochen. In Soviet times, she and other residents flew between the surrounding villages several times a year. In Soviet times, planes flew regularly on Tuesday and Friday. When there was no plane, on summer it was only by horse or by boat. These days, too, it is sometimes a boat to Romanovka village in Buretia, 180 kilometers away, and then by bus to Chita. A boat with an old outboard motor takes 120 liters of gasoline for the round trip, 7 hours to Romanovka and 5 hours back at best. On summer we manage to do it in one day if the water is high enough. There is another way. On foot like people used to do before there were motors in Imperial Russia. Alexei Ainchin, for example, traveled to Chita by air, but he would conclude all his affairs in one day and decided not to wait for a return flight as the plane comes to Yumorchen only once in two weeks. By bus from Chita, the one that goes to Bagdarin, then off the highway and walk. Now I'm going back on foot, ain't no waiting for the plane. A full day's walk all the way to Yumorchen. It is 45 kilometers from Mongo to Bungudda to be team and from there to here 25 kilometers more. In Soviet times, Yumorchen was home for about 200 persons. After planes stopped flying here in 1992, the population of this village decreased fourfold. There are probably 90 persons registered right now. Officially, that is. Practically, it's no more than 50 now. Hunting, fishing. We have the local council, the clubhouse, library, military forestry, and elementary school. Yet there are no medical facilities whatsoever. No doctor, no paramedic, not even a qualified nurse. People are here hunting, fishing, some work for military forestry. The forestry belongs to the Telembin missile range. After the return of aviation, life in the village became much easier. Transport connectivity to the rest of the world is important. It became possible to call an air ambulance if someone gets seriously sick. Or, for example, thanks to reinstatement of regular flights, Alexander Nikitin from Yumarchen got a rotational job at mining factory in the other part of the region. Parents of school children, including the very same Alexander, have it easier now too. In Yumarchen there is only an elementary school, so from the fifth grade and up, children live and study at a boarding school in another village, which is several hundred kilometers away. There is no more need of long overland journeys. Moreover, kids can come home for fall and spring holidays too, and much faster at that. For example, I used to take children for 10 years by horse every summer. Come winter it was 4x4 lorry, a gas 66 provided by the school, and now they just hop onto that plane and fly away. Children go on vacation by plane. There are special student flights for all vacations, fall, winter, spring and summer. The TVS2MS pilots told us that their passengers are mostly locals and their guests. In addition to standard bags and suitcases, people check in things like sprouts for the gardens, samovars, pork carcasses and other things you don't usually see aboard a commercial passenger jet airplane. No livestock, but live poultry indeed. On a recent flight to another village there were groceries, exotic fruits, onions, garlic and boxes of chickens. Yes, live chickens. They were clucking there through feathers all around. Well, there was no road there either. Eggs cost almost like gold if delivered. So they carried them chickens like something most precious. All pilots when comparing AN-2 and TVS-2MS note the major difference in thrust. It is especially noticeable in hot weather, when AN-2 engine barely spins. With TVS-2MS there is no trouble, you just push the throttle and go like nothing happens. It has 100 horses more and it's an honest number, not just on paper. Not to mention that after the first overhaul AN-2 engine barely makes 800 horsepower instead of 1000. Just recently I heard another AN-2 captain saying the thing just doesn't fly, barely takes off even with a good headwind. 
Another TVS 2MS advantage is a thrust reverser, which Antu does not have. You can roll and steer literally backwards, like when it's difficult to steer into the parking. It rarely happens, but I tried it once and it was fine. No pushback truck, nothing. Sometimes there is not even a tractor and no 10 guys around to push by hand. And here just a reverser. Transbaikalian regional authorities plan to restore almost the entire Soviet local flight network to connect remote settlements. Given such plans and that the quality of airstrips is good enough only for AN-2 and TVS-2MS, Rusoviaprom products will be in demand. These 10 rural airstrips, which are now in operation, are just the beginning. There are 17 more airstrips due. There are small places, but they really need air accessibility. So we're restoring and maintaining airstrips, mostly for medical evacuation flights. In general, we have plans for 42 airstrips to be restored and put to use. But there are plans for the future until 2035. Magadan region, or Kalima, is another place where TVS-2MS carries passengers. A government enterprise named Kolyma Aviation was created here in the end of 2018, specifically to restore the intra-regional flight routes. At the time of filming, there were only 27 employees here, two Mi-8 helicopters and two TVS-2MS airplanes. We procured two TVS-2MS planes as they were inexpensive and they have no equivalents. They use just regular jet fuel that is easier to procure and deliver than any kind of Avgas, and it can get anywhere within the region and back on one full tank. And again, it is really not picky about airstrip quality. There was no regional air service here since the late 1990s. We have had no direct air service for 20 years, and now you see that we have 11 flights to all settlements of Magadan region. Of 11 routes within the Magadan region, TVS-2MS is used on four. Maxim Startsev, director of Kolyma Aviation, says that the revival of regional aviation begins with the TVS-2MS. It is the first to go on new routes, and when passengers get used to the return of aviation and the flights are fully loaded, it is replaced by more capacious aircraft. TVS-2MS is used mainly for the rollout of routes, because its capacity allows us to start using them at minimal cost. If passenger numbers cannot be covered by service frequency, we introduce more spacious aircraft. The government of the Magadan Oblast, which founded and owns Kolyma Aviation, emphasizes the economic efficiency of TVS-2MS. We see that larger airplanes just cannot be used efficiently at the moment. And to reiterate, the funding comes from the regional budget, so two factors coincide here, and these planes are our priority. One of the settlements where the TVS-2MS flights began was a place in 300 kilometers from Magadan, a small town called Sinigoria, or Blue Mountains. So here we are at Sinigoria airfield. The flight took about an hour and a half. Since January of 2022, TVS-2MS fly here once a week. Yet, given the demand, there will be more flights on Saturdays. Now the residents of the village have an option to get to the region's capital and elsewhere much faster. The town is located near the Kalima Federal Road. It is served by scheduled buses, so its residents, unlike the people of Yumurchen, do not hike nor ride horses nor shake in long-distance tractors. Still, they are rather happy that now it takes just one and a half hours to get to Magadan and the plane ticket is only slightly, literally several cents, more expensive than the bus ticket. I'm quite happy with the flights and I really like the view from above. We used to travel to and from Sinigoria either by bus or by private car and that took long hours. Now that we have a baby, flying is even more convenient. We really like it and will fly more, right Savili? The airstrip supervisor, Yelena Belogorova, twice or thrice a week announces vacant seats on local social media, mostly in community chats. One can buy a ticket either by an agency or directly from Yelena, without agency fees. And me, personally, I help sell tickets to elderly people who do not have an email and can't use modern gadgets. People ask me to do it. This site was restored by the company and we are really proud of it. 
We have also restored small sites that have been used by the Aerial Forest Fire Service like Wustam Chug and Yagadne airstrips. The residents are really happy that instead of many hours on a bus, it takes just two hours to get to. These days, a site that was once a complete airport with a terminal and everything is just an airstrip. Yep, the residents are gradually getting used to air travel. The filming crew did not encounter indifference. This is my first flight. I'm happy with everything, like the speed of this ride. I'm used to an eight hours of rolling in a bus where it's, an, it's just an hour and a half. Just wow. And the scenery, you won't even see that from a bus. That's really awesome. This is my second time flying and I've never flown in such small airplanes before. I like it. Just an hour and a half of flying is like a luxury. A little noisy, of course, but great time saving nonetheless. Cool, fast. They did a good job with these local flights, it's really convenient now. I'm just happy for the Magadan region that they developed small aviation here. The pilots are also happy with the plane. Considering that almost the entire territory of the Magadan region is mountains, the first thing they note is the climb rate. So, we've just flew to Senegori and back in three hours. On an AN-2 we would fly through gorges, all twists and turns at 1200 meters a bumpy flight that would have taken two and a half hours one way. Here we have a good climb rate so we go above all the mountains at 3500 meters and then directly to the destination. Shorter flight time, smaller fuel consumption. Also people don't like shaky flights. And as a rule it is all calm and quiet up above. Igor Kurtzen piloted TVS-2MS all over the country, from the heat of the Black Sea coast, where it is almost plus 40 centigrade in the shade, to Magadan, where even minus 50 degrees is almost normal. He says that unlike AN-2, where on summer the engine overheats on the ground and on winter it is a task to start it because of the cold, the Honeywell operates without problems. The Honeywell's working temperature is 500 degrees, plus 45 or minus 45 degrees outside, that doesn't affect anything. In Magadan itself, minus 45 or 50 is not that common, but it happens. The engine is easy to start, it doesn't need long preheating and warm-ups contrary to and to at least. That old radial piston engine requires a long warm-up because there is a lot of oil there, and that oil must be properly warmed up. In addition to Sinigoria, Kalama Aviation has three more destinations for TVS-2MS – Susuman, Ustomchuk and Yagodne. The airline and the regional government say that people appreciate the air transport, and there is no more talk about reducing the number of flights. Flights have become popular, and of course we won't be cutting any slots this year. I would also like to say that our funding has increased compared to the last year. This year we have already allocated almost 300 million rubles for transportation. For Magadan region, Kalama Aviation is a substantial expense, the initial investment particularly so. Still, regardless of the company being a state-owned enterprise, it leases its airplanes like a private airline. Leasing reduces the burden on the budget and helps to cut costs of carrying passengers. Not to mention that in northern regions aviation is impossible without subsidies because everything is really expensive here, be it fuel, infrastructure or labor. Leasing is highly useful in aviation. It allows, for instance, to start using the airplane without a down payment. So while not yet spending any public money, you already use the aircraft to carry people or for other jobs. The first operator of TVS-2MS was the government-owned Amur Air Base, where this aircraft began works in force monitoring and firefighting since the early 2014. The Amur Air Base is a unique force protection enterprise with its own maintenance base and the largest aircraft fleet among the counterparts. Among them, there are two TVS-2MS planes, which were purchased by the Air Base eight years ago. They have recently been brought up to the standard design at the Rutavia Prom plant, now certified for carrying passengers. The Amur Air Base has 11 Antus, two TVS-2MS planes and four MiE helicopters. The men on board are 162 paratroopers firefighters. Think about this figure. 88% of the Amur region's territory is a forest. 32 million hectares are state forestry lands. That must be monitored, 
looked after and of course protected from forest fires. Indeed, there are other ways and modern technologies. Satellites, drones, they have their place, but foot patrols and regular aviation are the most important ones. There is a group of paratroopers aboard each AN-2 or TVS. If a fire is detected, a group of paratroopers lands right by the spot and immediately begins extinguishing it. So, all is well, of course, new ways and new methods of monitoring, they certainly have a place, still, classic aviation is indispensable, and everything else is just a supplement. The work of this state-owned firefighting enterprise did not stop even in the 1990s, after the USSR collapse, when whole industries went bust. In addition to fires, this region is also known for powerful floods, so Amur Air Base helps to deliver cargo and transport people from remote areas, be it hell or high water, or both at once. The crews of Amur Air Base also search for spent stages of space rockets launched from Vostochny spaceport. The three main directions of work are fires, emergency situations and passenger transportation. And then, during space rocket launches, it is uh, the search of rocket stages that fall down. These are main functions performed by the air base. Unlike other regions, it is impossible to fight forest fires in a more region from the ground only. With forest fires, it is often impossible to do anything without aviation. There is no other way to deliver people, no way to organize firefighting work, and no way to get people out of the fire. Only aviation can do this. There are six aviation squadrons across the region, so during the fire season the airplanes and helicopters are deployed in different places, depending on the actual fire hazard there, and they are usually ready to scramble within an hour. As a rule, people are in constant readiness, packed and stacked. There is a call, they just load everything and take off. There is also an observer pilot on board. An observer pilot is, so to say, a star of the show in fighting force fires, from detection to extinguishing. When a fire is detected, the observer pilot leaves the route, approaches the fire site, assesses the situation and selects a landing site for the parachute firefighters. Amur Air Base will soon launch passenger flights as well. We have the TVS-2MS aircraft in operation since 2014. During this time, these planes have been used for aerial forest monitoring. Now, after a complete overhaul, they will also be used by a government contract to connect remote settlements of the region. The Ministry of Forestry of the Amur region is satisfied with the economics of the TVS-2MS, mostly because of stable operation of its engine in hot weather and different fuel, so it allows longer patrol flights. They prove themselves. The flight hour of the TVS is cheaper than that of the AN-2. First of all, it's because of cheaper jet fuel instead of aviation gasoline, higher speed, longer range. All these advantages make for cheaper flight hour and better economics. The engine is more powerful, the fuel consumption is somewhat lower, the fuel itself is cheaper. That and no problems with operation in hot weather. Here in Amur region we have quite hot summers, hot enough for AN-2 to lose power. For TVS-2MS, that is not a problem, we are happy with the plane. Technician Anatoly Titurkin has been working at the Amur Air Base since 2013 and says that Honeywell engines never overheated, unlike the Asha-62. He also notes that it is easier for him as a technician to work with the TVS-2MS. TVS is easier to operate and maintain. The airframe is the same as an AN-2, we know it well, as for the engine. Well, well, at first it was a bit unusual, but then we got used to it. With this engine, the TPF33112, it's really easier than the original AN-2. Vladimir Kobitz, the Amur Air Base Airplane Squadron Chief Pilot, joined Blagoveshensk Air Squadron in 1991, right after graduating the flight school, and has been working only here, and only on AN-2 and TVS MS for more than 30 years. He logged more than 8,000 hours on AN-2 and more than 2,000 hours on TVS-2MS. He says that these biplanes offer a kind of romance that cannot be found with jet airliners. All of my former co-pilots are flying as Boeing and Airbus captains in Vladivostok and Moscow and, and other places for a long time. Half of my classmates are also in big aviation. Some remained on AN-2, though. Everyone has a job and you just have to love your job, whatever it is. Some people like to push buttons on these Airbus flying computers on a nice payroll. Some people just love nature, romance, bumpy rides, firefighting, caring village people. 
that's quite a job too, and it may somehow be a bit harder. We have no autopilots, and we fly low and slow. The first TVS to MS foreign order came from the Minsk Dosav in Belarus. Minsk Dosav Flight Club may be envied by many, not only in Belarus and Russia, but all over the world. One of the reasons is TVS to MS, as it allows the club to be among the best. In 2016, one of the TVS to MS operators was invited to the Republic of Belarus to work with sports paratroopers. It was then when the head of Minsk Dosa Flight Club, Nikolai Mochansky, seen for himself that TVS to MS, with a full load of 12 paratroopers, climbs to 4,000 meters and comes back in 25 minutes. The climb rate of TVS to MS reaches 10 meters per second, which is beyond all dreams with Antu. After that, Nikolai Mochansky calculated the running costs, collected positive feedback from other operators, and sent one of his Antus for conversion into TVS to MS. Now he personally recommends everyone to buy a TVS to MS or have an Antu converted. This aircraft is indispensable, the one that you really need. As a professional pilot, as an engineer, as a manager, I want to tell everyone interested, just get it. I was not bribed to say that. I am saying this because I, as a manager, as a pilot, I am using this plane for over three years, so I know it for myself. You won't regret it, because it will lead your organization to a positive breakthrough, and you will only be happy that you bought it. The head of the Minsk Flight Club is also pleased with the after-sales service provided by PMI Aero. Any question related to TVS to MS is usually answered within a day. Consulting, consumables and parts are always provided in the timeless manner for the most efficient operation. The company that sells and supplies parts, retrains pilots and engineers is run by young lads. They are smart, witty, honest and speedy. They are interested in doing their job right, and that grows on you. That's how the work should be done, and that's how I prefer to work myself. Minsk Aero Club now has all the permits for all kinds of retraining. Here they independently retrain both pilots and technicians according to individual programs, considering their existing experience with Antsu. We draw up an individual retraining plan, and pilots are getting their retraining right here at Minsk Flight Club. The study plans are drawn individually according to actual experience of each particular flight crew. Say, one pilot may have 1000 hours locked, another has 3000 hours. That means the difference in skill levels, so flight training programs are tailor-made for each pilot. Some need more takeoff and go-around flights, some need more practice with dropping of paratroopers. There are two jobs for TVS to MS in Minsk Dosav. The first one is high altitude paratrooper drops from 4000 meters. The second task is aerial photography to update topographic maps of Belarus at government request. After operating this first plane for four years, Nikolai Mochansky is serious about getting the second TVS to MS. Belarusian pilots are also satisfied with the TVS to MS. During the survey flights, they were airborne for five and a half hours at the speed of up to 130 knots, and the piloting was comfortable, there was neither vibration nor increased engine noise. The pilots also liked the shorter takeoff and landing distances. If we compare TVS to MS and AN2, the takeoff run of TVS is about 50 to 80 meters. Given standard similar conditions, AN2 requires up to 200 meters. But the main difference is that on TVS to MS you can always fly wearing white shirt and white pants. No dripping oil, no dirty pre-flight procedures. It is a clean airplane, much cleaner than an Antu. In Russia, Dosav also tried the TVS to MS and acquired the taste for it. Now, Saratov Flight Club also has its own TVS to MS. The place is famous for being the flight school of the world's first cosmonaut, Yuri Gagarin. It combines versatile design of Antu with higher speed and better range. A very interesting machine for many purposes. That is a wonderful plane for long-range flights and for dropping sports paratroopers. 
Sarato Flight Club sent their AN-2 for conversion into TVS-2MS through the leasing scheme drawn up by PMI Aero. Now the club uses its new airplane for all kinds of work – parachute jumps, aerial surveys and even air ambulance. For air ambulance you can use either a fixed-wing airplane or a helicopter. A plane is much cheaper, but a helicopter can land almost anywhere. Combining these advantages, you may cut costs while saving more people's lives. On non-ambulance days, the TVS-2MS lifts paratroopers to altitudes up to 4 km. Thanks to the speed and to the climb rate, the turnaround is much faster, so it can perform a dozen lifts per day, or even more. It's easy and pleasant to work with both the manufacturer, Rusaviaprom, and the distributor, PMI Aero. These folks are, so to say, in the know. They have deep knowledge of aviation and sometimes come up with unorthodox but very efficient solutions. So it's not only comfortable but interesting to work with them. Another job considered for this TVS-2MS is reintroduction of passenger flights between Dubki airfield and remote settlements in Saratov region. This film was made to showcase the joint effort of the manufacturer Rusaviaprom and the distributor PMI Air. Together they produce and market airplanes that have already proved themselves. And you have seen how an obsolete flying machine turns into a relevant aircraft, highly useful in Russia and anywhere in the world.